You're listening to Metal Thunder Radio interviews. If you like what you hear, you can listen to the full shows by going to our website, www.metalthunderradio.com. We got tons of great music, videos, merchandise, and more. You can also check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash Metal Thunder Radio. You can send us a message, submit your music for airplay, or just stop by and say hi. Either way, hope to hear from you soon. This week we have the great Frank Watkins. That's right. Formerly of Obituary, now in Gorgoroth. That's right. Frank, uh, thanks for joining us. All right, how are you doing, guys? Good, how are you? What's doing up, good, Frank? Man. Thank you so much you? for coming on. Um, I'm doing good, thank you. Thank you. Just uh, chilling out on a Monday night. Excuse me, yeah, Monday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Well, well, you're so, down, I don't you're, even know what tell you what the weekend is. <laughs> you're, you're, down in, uh, you're down in Florida, right? Yep, yep. Oh, like we're Southeast. in the same time zone. That works out. That works out. Yeah, yeah okay. Because yeah. we do interviews sometimes with people like overseas, and it's like they got to wait up to like 3 o'clock in the morning to, <laughs> to do it with us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah when you're talking <laughs> to people in Sweden, exactly. it's kind of like, I, yeah. I oh, do yeah. all my business in the morning with the Europeans. I know exactly what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, that, oh, would, yes. that would make sense. Yeah. I do that as well in my line of work. I'm always like, if I have to do with anybody in London, it starts at like 5 a.m. because yeah. it's already 10 yeah, o'clock in the exactly. morning there. That's right. Here, you guys in the state, New York State, are you coming out of the city? Or? New, York city? New York City. Yeah, we're in Queens. Yeah. You're in Queens. Oh, I was born in Queens. Nice. Oh, really? What part of Queens were you born in? Uh, I was born at St. John's. Uh, Hospital in Queens, so right, like near Middle Village. Yeah, right, yeah, on, right I mean, on Queens uh, Boulevard. Yeah. Well, not, I not live, anymore. Yeah. It's not there anymore. Well, it's but not there anymore. Uh, yeah. I, I, live anymore yeah. I live in Middle Village. I live in Middle Village, Regal Park. That's right where I live. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, live yeah, like, I used to live right on Dry Harbor Road. Oh my God. Oh, oh wow. That's like a five minute walk yeah. from here. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. My 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 mom's best friend's father owned John's Bar. I don't know if you remember John's Bar that was there. Yes, on Dry Harbor. On Dry Harbor, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. Dry Harbor, yeah, and we lived in the house above it. That was, that's like the house I was born in. Oh, oh man. Oh, check that out. Yeah, I'm right off of uh, 64th Road and Woodhaven Boulevard, so it's like... Right wow, there. wow. <laughs> Holy Great. shit. Okay, well, that's... That... up there. My brother just got married um, back in September. Nice. Yeah. Oh, Every that's time cool. I get off the plane when I go to New York, I feel like I'm home. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> of course. Well, not, so not, but that... I've been here in Florida since I was like 10 years old. Okay, because that was going to be my next yeah, question. Right. Was like, you know, yeah. going back to uh, around 1989 is around when you hooked up with uh, Obituary, correct? Now, this would have been right yeah. after they released Slowly We Rot? Yeah, they just finished the album. Actually, I, I bought the tape, a friend of mine, and we <laughs> were going up to see Morbid Angel play, and we wanted to get some music, and we stopped by this music store that we typically would get some stuff, and we saw this stuff, this album, this tape, Obituary. It was guy laying dead in the street and stuff and me and my friend i never heard i hadn't heard it yet i knew who executioner was but i didn't know that they changed their name to obituary it's kind of like sudden and i was kind of more allotted to like cave trading i, I was in the band Hellwitch at the time right oh, right right. Like, yeah. i knew about a lot in the underground but i couldn't believe i missed this band but i knew they were playing at this uh the show me and my friend were going to so we jammed the record and i guess like anybody when i when i popped on slowly re rot and I heard like the first three seconds it like knocked me off my seat you know oh yeah <laughs> oh, definitely yeah. that first the first part of it just I, I had chills man and I was just like wow this is amazing and then when I saw him that night I went up to this it was in the, it was in this place called the hangar near McDill Air Force Base mm -hmm. uh -huh. and Amon played who was Deicide and eventually became Deicide played oh, all right. oh wow, was all right. the headliner and uh, a couple of the bands played I believe um Nocturnus played, and Obituary played, and, and they played with some some big heavy set dude that was uh, playing bass. He didn't look like he fit the band. He looked like he was maybe a roadie or a friend of the band <laughs> or something, wearing like normal clothes and shit. Just did not fit what they were doing on their vibe. But the, they looked sick. They sounded amazing. Trevor just looked like freaking skull on stage. It was just so evil, man. It, yeah. it, would, it wouldn't help I was on LSD, too, so it wouldn't help at all. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody looked like a skull. It was an amazing show, and this, and this kid comes next to me, taps me on the shoulder, and it was Tony Choi, who's a really good friend of mine. He was in Atheist. He was in um, Cynic for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, good friend of mine. And he tells me, bro, man, this band needs a bass player. And he goes, you're the guy, man. You're the fucking dude. And I... About two months later, long story short, I ended up talking to them and ended up joining the band. And like two months, three months after that, I was in Europe. That's awesome. Wow. That's awesome. He, he picks up the, 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 
the tape. the tape, and he listens to it, loves it, goes to the show, and he's like, "All right, you're in the band." That is fucking awesome. Yeah, and, and then of yeah. course, I mean, then it was a little more than that, but it was, yeah, pretty much like that. <laughs> That's wow. awesome. And that show is insane because like Chuck was there from Death. Oh and wow! I was talking to all these different people, and I was talking to David Vincent Trey that night. I mean, it was an insane night, and I, I met John Tardy that night, and it was like, "Yeah, we need a bass player." Yeah, I play bass. Oh, cool. <laughs> That is just, awesome. It works out well. We didn't have cell phones. We didn't have email and shit. So when I got home, it's like, well, what do we do now? Right, right. So I, I mean, got on. I got up like on on uh, information, and I called for like Tampa Bay area, and I asked for like Tardy, the last name. Nothing was coming up. Oh, that's funny. I was asking for the last name West. Nothing was coming up, and I found somebody named Paris. There was a lot of Perez. Mm-hmm. There was no P E R E S Paris, and there was one some guy named Lee Paris it was Trevor's dad. And oh I wow! Called it up, and this woman answered, and it was Trevor's mom, and she's really a really nice lady. And we started talking. I told her I'd met them at the band a couple of months ago at the show, and they're still looking for a bass player. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta talk to Trevor. Hold on. Oh, and I, like a week true. later, I went up there and auditioned. That's that is awesome. Awesome. I mean, and think sick. about that. Just that's how you had to do it back then, and we remember that too. Yeah. Like actually. Dubbing tapes, going and handing out tapes. There was no internet, so there was oh, yeah. no way to go and no. get your music out to the masses. You had to go out and physically hand stuff out and call people on the telephone, which oh, is yeah. kind of like a lost art form but now. It, <laughs> mail it, it mail out letters. Though, because you had still had the element of surprise, because I'd wait for shit to come in the mail of like oh, yeah. bands that I was dying to hear. You know, just the new Devastation demo that was coming out, this band from Texas, Devastation, back in the early 80s was, was about to be mailed to me. I hadn't heard it yet. There were a list of things where guys would send me a list. I want this, I want that, I want this. And just the anticipation of getting things and having it. I mean, today, it, it, that's kind of gone. But yeah, it really like is. It is. And I did, the, I did the tape trading back in, in the mid-late 80s as well. And I remember very mm-hmm. vividly getting like uh, stuff from like Demolition Hammer, uh, yeah. and, and I would I actually called the, the drummer of that band Vinny Days' mom and like ordered oh, the wow. demo yeah. from them wow. like, I sent like a, <laughs> I sent like a money that's order awesome. or some shit you know and that's yeah that was that's awesome but it was yeah it was the anticipation of getting it of getting it and and uh and it's funny, before I forget also, uh, in late 07, I actually filmed you guys, when you're still in Obituary, I filmed you guys in, in Brooklyn, and you had actually, oh, e- yeah? yeah, you emailed me, I guess about a week after the show, and you were like, you know, hey, do you, you, know, do you have a copy of it? And I sent you a copy of it on DVD, it was the Brooklyn Execution Fest from December 07. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah that was uh, me, that was me that filmed that. Right. <laughs> yeah, my, my band yeah. actually played that show with you guys, uh, right. you're not going to remember oh, Shadow yeah. of Demise, but <laughs> yeah, we played the show, we all hung out at Duff's after. It was, yep. it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. What was the band called? Uh, Shadow of Demise. Yeah, we were like, we we're like number yeah. two on the bill. You know, <laughs> it's like we got, we got, we snuck in there. I don't know how we got on it. It was really awesome though. It was a great, it was a great cool. show. Oh, it was. A, it yeah, was I a, remember that. It was like a weekend. We did like we played like Albany or something, and then came to Brooklyn. It was like a, a whole weekend thing, like our one-off kind of a thing that we did. I remember. I totally remember that. Oh yeah, yeah. it was like right before you guys, was Marauder went on. Yeah, Marauder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was a yep. that, that Blood was Feast. A fucking great Blood show. Feast was on that show. Um, oh, one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a fun shit. Oh yeah. So before I was in Obituary, I had that vinyl Sacrifice. I had the, that album on vinyl. Oh yeah, yeah. All oh, yeah. unbelievable stuff back in the day. It and really now they're was. Coming back, I saw they they played the Maryland Death Vest Sacrifice. Yeah. Yes, I saw that. Dark yeah. Angel too, which was amazing. I I just did Hellfest with Ovich with uh, Gorgoroth actually. Oh, um, nice. Back in July, June, and and Dark Angel played. Oh, nice. And I I didn't get to see them because I left the day they were playing. But in the morning, I went to the breakfast area at the hotel, and I sit down and I, and I start talking to this to Duff McKagan of all people. <laughs> 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 And he's see where we're shooting the shit, and he's asking me about the festival and stuff. And he sits down next to me. He goes, "Oh, you want to join you for breakfast?" I'm like, "Sure." We start talking, and then Ron, the singer from Dark Angel, starts listening to our conversation. He sits down with us, so the three of us start shooting the shit for like an hour and a half. Oh, that's awesome! It was awesome because I, I was more in, in awe of meeting Ron because I'm a huge Dark Angel fan. Oh, that's and I was so embarrassed because I hadn't seen him on their on their you know their re- reformation. I haven't had a chance to see him yet. They haven't played. Anywhere that I've lived, or I haven't, I miss all the festivals that they've done and shit. Yeah, well, they've, you've been, they've been playing guy. huge. They've been playing big festivals. Big festivals, yeah. 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 Lately, yeah. yeah. I, but I miss them. Everyone I've done, we, I was enough the next day or the day before or something. 
Well, now, so you did, so you were in pretty much, you, you were on all the obituary albums, with the exception of uh, Slowly Rewrite, through, through the years, yep. mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. you were pulling double duty for a while with Gorgoroth and Obituary up until around 2010, is that what happened? Yeah, well, um, Roger, the Infernus, the guitar player from Gorgoroth, has been a friend of mine for a long time. I, I met him somewhere at some festival or something. We, we ended up kind of shooting emails together. He had a record label. He'd have questions about American rules and regulations and patents. And, you know, just I, I always had a thing for the business side of music. Mm-hmm. And I always give my knowledge to friends of mine that I knew or people that had questions, didn't know what the hell they were doing with signing a new re- record deal or or wanted to go, you know, master an album, and they really, what is mastering, what does that really do? And, like, who's a good mastering company? So I'd answer questions, and I had a lot of friends, so me and Roger and Furnace had that kind of relationship. And when, whatever the shit that went down with um, Gall and King and all that kind of crap, he texted me and said, uh, Frank, I need a bass player to join Golgoroth. And I just was like, well, shit. I guess this went down pretty hard. I didn't even really know exactly what down, but I, I knew there was some kind of craziness going to happen, and I texted him back, I'm in. Nice. And I really didn't, really didn't do anything with him till about 2010, till we did that show in Bergen. Right. That mm-hmm. uh, Hole in the Sky Festival. So it was just a kind of a commitment, but he was, he was my boy. He was my good friend of mine. And he, he was in, uh, you know, he had some problems. And I, I was there to, to be, you know, at his back. That yeah, is yeah, that's cool. Because yeah. I was really curious on how you would, you know, hook up with, you know, the Gorgoroth guys. I mean, for even rehearsals, even rehearsals. Yeah. I mean, you got you're here, they're somewhere far away. You know, it's just I'm just, yeah, cu- you know, hot well, curious. We're how universe, we're musicians, you know, and we and we connect on a personal level. Me and him as friends. We never we we've always discussed music. We had the similar tastes. I've always been a huge black metal fan. But I like old '80s metal, Dokken, things like that. Vandenberg, old '80s metal, metal guitarists, of Ingve and stuff like that. Jesus yeah. Priest. Me and him have that kind of connection with bands like that. We like a lot of old, evil, obscure black metal, and just we have a lot of things in common overall. A lot of our theories and things we think alike. And we just hit it off. Always hit it off. We we've always just been like friends. And when he needed somebody and he needed somebody to help him out, I was totally there to help them. That's cool. And it's just, it worked out. I was able to go jam with them and I knew the songs because I'm, like I said, I was a fan, but when he sent me a set list, I went back, I listened to a lot of the albums and I learned the music just like I did with Obituary. Right. When I first jammed with them, I went up to Tampa to jam with them and the Tardies were, we were supposed to go to their jam room that they had and that's where everybody was going to meet and where they were going to audition me. And they apparently had a move, and it happened to me the weekend I was coming up to audition. And, you know, with no cell phones, no emails at the time, it was hard to get a hold of anybody. And I already already left to go drive to Tampa, and it was like a four-hour drive to get up there. So I get up there, and I'm told that they're not going to do this. We're not going to be able to jam. We're not going to be able to practice with you. Sorry about that. And uh-huh. I ended up hanging out with Trevor and Alan. Mm-hmm. And uh, we ended up hanging out and just partying and drinking all night. And I ended up playing with Alan with like acoustically on bass and a guitar. Oh, nice. Oh, that's and interesting. Wow. I did like the whole Slow Your Rod album. And he was like, dude, it's up to me and Trevor. You're in the band, bro. Oh, that's great. I, was, I knew all the music. I wasn't going to be an idiot and go up there and not know anything. I was going to say, that was a. You know, was... I, I even learned like songs from their demos from the Executioner song album, um, demos like Like the Dead and. Metal up your ass. Things I didn't think they would maybe pull out, but I was like, you know what? If they do, I'd be able to freak them out and play anything they had. You know. You did your homework, man. Yeah, That's you what you did, and it yeah, fucking paid yeah. off in it spades. Had <laughs> yeah, I had to. I had to make it sound killer. And I had to put myself into the to their vibe. I, when I wanted to, when I wanted to, not only just play with them and replace what they had, or just I wanted to put what I was doing because I played in a lot of punk rock kind of bands, and I played with some uh, metal bands and some. Like I'm playing that with that band Hellwitch, they were kind of a technical thrash, black metalish kind of band, and I played with a band called Sacrosanct that was kind of like a Metallica, Merciful Fate kind of feeling, sounding band that was like in '85, '86. That's so cool. I had a diversity in my bass playing, and I, I always liked COC. Mike Dean was a big fan. Of, I mean, I was a big fan of his, and Daryl Jennifer from the Bad Marines. I was a huge fan of his. So I would use that style of playing 
really heavy, hard jackhammer style get to bass playing, and I just approach it with like the obituary sound and style. And it, to me, it made it just made sense. It filled it and it made it really heavier live, especially. Yeah, it's very and diverse. We when I when I ended up jamming with them, they were just wow, man. This fuck, this is amazing. Now, what like all the years with obituary? Like, what are some of the highlights for you? Like that stick out in your mind in terms of maybe some shows or just events or, or albums, recording sessions, or whatever. What what are some of the things that stick out with you? First time going to Europe and playing a show in the, not in our own country, and the whole crowd knew every lyric, which we were like, we don't even have fucking, lyrics. we don't even have lyrics. That's all you heard in the crowd, but they were doing it. <laughs> they were hitting it and I was floored I was like wow these kids know our, they know everything they know exactly what we're doing I was so surprised that was a huge highlight and and like back in those days we'd play a, like the Dynamo Festival to like 40,000 people there wow. and ne I never imagined to be in front of something like that or we played Mexico one time I think it was Guadalajara and I felt like I was at a Judas Priest concert in Hollywood this auditorium in Florida like with like 30,000 people. It was wow. such an insane Holy show. The, there was people all around the rafters and everything. It was just... And shows like that, it's, I, it, to me, I don't get nervous whether it's a big crowd or a teeny crowd. It's, I feel the same on either side. But just to the fact of having that vibe with the mass of people and stuff, that you never forget. Well, and, and now with Gorgoroth, what are some of the highlights that stand out for you with, uh, with Gorgoroth now that you're with those guys? Uh, more of the highlights with them are the stuff that we do on our own, like recording. We record in like this basement in, in Sweden. It's the, our drummer, Thomas Osklin, he used to play with Dissection years ago. He played with Dissection up until uh, Yon passed and Dissection's no more. So he uh, kind of comes from the same background as us, has the same kind of ideologies that we have on recording and stuff so he was just like a perfect fit with us and when we got together and recorded it was so evil feeling and it was such a perfect aura I mean I, I never forget just that feeling and that to me is music that's creative music that moment in time you know when, when bands record a song here and you're recording the guitars up the street there or here or there and things get put together but we would record like all at once live stuff and add things here and there but it was always like us together so things like that were big highlights for me with Gorgoroth and then playing the first show that we did and we did a, sh a song Manishi and Slava that we had they have never played for like 12 years and it was a song that was dedicated to their drummer that uh, passed years ago so that was a, a really big highlight for me with Gorgoroth well, and another cool. show that we did was in Trondheim. It was at a college. It was in the northern part of Norway. Just this crazy college. And the college paid for us to play the show. They paid to make our stage show. We had these massive white upside-down crosses. It, it was insane. <laughs> the production that they did was crazy. And the college kids, they made like, it was like their college credits to do this, make a satanic stage for this band. And <laughs> they got they got we're, college we're credit for that. Get, uh, <laughs> you know, models to come in to hang on the crosses and stuff. Nobody wanted to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you get? What'd you get your credits for? Oh, I was on a cross. <laughs> like what the fuck? That's right. I was crucified. That's what I got my credits for. Yeah, How about you? How did yeah, you pass your class? Yeah. Well, I made a upside down crosses on a stage show for Gorgoroth. <laughs> yeah, crucifixions. Oh, That's they're, my they're guess. Huge too. They're like twenty five feet tall. These crosses. It's insanity. It's, That's crazy. That, that that just goes to show you the big, huge difference musically between Europe and, and here and, or, in the U.S. You yeah. get college credit for doing music, you mm -hmm. know, stuff you like that over there. You get thrown in jail for doing that over here. <laughs> right. So. Yeah. And, and, you know, those guys, they, they get money from the government because they the government believes to fulfill music and they want music flourishing in the country. And the Norwegians are really big on making sure they support their, their musicians. So right. bands like wow. Gorgoroth and... These bands are getting, you know, grants to go on tour and do stuff. And really? Record and wow. Put their studios together. So it's, it's fucking awesome. How the the country hell am I doing people. here? Jesus. Exactly. What are we doing? What are we doing Freaking, sitting what here? What are we doing here? We're idiots. We're idiots. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I can't beat the shit out of my parents. What did you come here for? I <laughs> 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 was born in Europe. What's fuck? That's yeah. right. <laughs> and, wait, being in Gor I think we all have the question, uh, yeah. you know, being, being in Gorgoroth, you know, we see... You know, Gall, in all his interviews, he's very intense. He's very, you know, you know, super focused and extremely intense. 
how is he like that like you know behind the scenes like when you're in rehearsal or like you know backstage is he that intense as you know he comes across? i've never played with him i've never played a show with him i never played in a band with him because when things kind of went to shit with Gorgoroth, him and king took off and then i kind of joined in with inferno so i wasn't really part of their oh. things they were doing <laughs> but i did know him because i knew him prior when i was you know friends with the guys in Gorgoroth before right. i was ended up playing with them when i knew roger beforehand i knew them from shows and festivals and he's, he's the same real level-headed quiet dude he, he's really pretty much exactly what you see of him is what i get out of him you yeah. know, he's it's not like he's uh puts on a different face when you, when you see him at a different time. He's, like, jumping around doing backflips and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he does. I, he does it's like, Gal, calm down. People are coming. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. But, you know, it was just... You know, oh, he's really calm, cool, collected. When I met him, he, I, the first time I met him, it was kind of weird. I, I was at the Wacken Festival, and it was just when all this shit went down, when I was actually announced that I'm now in Gorgoroth, and they just played as Gorgoroth at Wacken. And did a wicked show. I saw it. There was the night before, and man, the, the stage show is insane. I'm, you've probably seen it. It was on YouTube. Yeah, we've oh, seen, yeah. we seen the YouTube videos. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Unbelievable freaking stage show. Really sick. So the next day, I'm there and I'm, I'm hanging out in the in the VIP area, and I saw King, and he's kind of like staring at me when I'm standing there, and I'm hanging with Ralph Santola, my guitarist, for, yeah. with Obituary at the time. Yeah, and we're having drinks, and he, Ralph keeps saying to me. Who's that guy over there staring at you? But he, I think he likes you or something. He's, just, <laughs> he's, hair. he's like staring at you. What's going on with that? And I go, oh, that's the dude from Gorgoroth. He's probably like, you know, looking at me because I'm like the, the new guy in the band. And he goes, oh, that's the King of Hell guy, right? I go, yep. So he walks right up to him and we start talking and shit. And so we're, you know, really cool with each other. No problems at all. He was pretty right. calm. Now, hey, what's going on? I'm Frank. Nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And he, 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 I could tell he was kind of lit, and Ralph was pretty drunk and wasted. <laughs> no, and, uh, <laughs> no way. He said something about the cross around his neck, something about Christians, and uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly what he said, but it was really offensive to Ralph because Ralph's a, a Catholic Christian, or whatever you want to call him. Uh -huh. So I thought they were going to throw it out and start fighting because Ralph just got pissed off. He like stepped back, and uh, kicked off his sandals. He was like ready to throw down and kicked oh, off his like, sandals. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly a holy war like, breaks out. <laughs> Damn <laughs> you! I'm throwing away my down. sandals. And I'm like, come on, guys! You know what's, what the fuck? You're going to fight? What's going on, man? They're just like yelling and screaming, and nothing was going on. So I'm like, man, get it on! You guys going to fight? Or <laughs> fucking, it's a drink. Remember what he said Either about the cross? Either we go to the bar or we drink or you guys start messing it up. What the fuck? And they're like not doing nothing. So I'm like, come on, let's go drink. So we go up to the bar. We have a drink. And they forgot everything. And they're, they're just wrecked. And yeah. And just start yeah. being buddies and hanging out and hugging each other. <laughs> We've all had that and, night. And Tom kept saying to me and, and Ralph, you have to meet Christian. We must meet Christian. We must meet Christian. Okay, cool. Let's meet him. Yeah. And was like going back and forth, and he's telling us he's going to meet him, he's going to take us, he's going to take us, and we didn't meet him, and it must have been two or three hours. So finally, we got taken to like this other area with the VIP room and this other like area where there was like all the benches and stuff. So it's like this distant kind of VIP area with this big table with thousands of people sitting around, and he was sitting there, and so we went up and there's this big entourage, I guess, with him. And we were hanging out, and I met him, totally cool, had a drink with him. At first, he didn't want to drink whiskey. He told us he didn't drink whiskey, but we're South Southern rednecks. And kind of <laughs> you're having a drink with us, and he did. He was right away. He was like, "All right, yeah, you know, nice. I'm oh, that's cool." With you guys, you know, and he had a drink with us. We met his boyfriend or whatever it was at the time that was there, which was pretty obvious because he was like the only like blonde haired. <laughs> Homosexual, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to all those. He didn't look like he fit. Put it that way. Right, those right. blonde-haired straight guys. That, forget about you know, them. But nothing <laughs> against it. It just was like the, everything was in the stories about it. And I was reading all that, and then here it is, right in front of me. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there here it is. It, is. <laughs> it kind of becomes a surreal moment. Wait, I was just <laughs> reading about this. <laughs> oh, I, heard, cool. I heard. I heard about this. Cool, but... you know. And, and the next day, we heard that there's some big thing went down and, and him and um, Tom got in a fight with some big fag bashers that were there and some big fight went down and they beat the shit out of these guys and uh, I don't know if they were talking about us because nothing went down with us right. it might have, could have earlier but it didn't 
But it's everybody was saying, oh, I saw you hang out with them. Is that you guys when you got in the fight? Is that you guys? I'm not. We didn't fight with them. Yeah, it was probably what led up to almost the fight, and then it gets blown out of proportion by other people. Some, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. Somebody was ready to fight that night. I knew it. There was some Something was there was fire happen. in that dude. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> It was a stress level. Something was going to go. Something was going to go down. Well, you and now you got the uh, the back from uh, the Dead Productions, right? You started that in uh, what was it? Oh seven. You started that. Yeah, yeah. When I kind of officially made it, because I've like I said, I've always kind of been helping friends of mine just because I was good at reading contracts. I have a lot of friends in my family that have kind of showed me how to read things and understand law. And, mm -hmm. and That's very a important. Lot of it, in that it kind of is common yeah. sense stuff, which when I kind of talk to friends of mine i'm like don't think it's so crazy and you look at a contract and it's like looks like a book you know and they're like oh my god i don't even know what the hell <laughs> you kind of look at it and can decipher it and you have a, a maybe a, an attorney or somebody look at it it's pretty basic and simple it's just a bunch of like easy things to decipher whether you're going to do it or not you know? yeah yeah. So yeah just taking it and understanding it and just kind of deciphering through it so i do a lot of that and helping friends of mine so i said you know what i should just start doing this and I kind of made a company out of it. And then I started managing bands. And it was more of like I was doing consulting. Because I didn't want to kind of like lock anybody into what I was doing. I didn't want to force anybody to work with me. I just wanted to help people out. Right. But then I'd help people out and they'd get a pretty decent sized record deal or something. And I wouldn't get you. Oh, yeah, dude, I'll, I'll throw you a bone. Be like, hey, I'm hey, a, what a about me? Like a, yeah. like a small doobie they sent me. <laughs> <laughs> they actually throw you a bone. They, they, they go. literally yeah. do. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. So, that, so well, I figured, you know, like maybe I should start. Because I'd get the guys from Marauder who came to me and wanted to do some work with me. And right. I mm -hmm. was like, yeah, man, let's do it. I love those guys. Really good friends with Jorge and, and the newer guys that were in the band at the time. So it was like this would be great. So I helped them get the deal with Regain Records, oh, wow. which the only reason we did that because we needed money to record an album. And the way I looked at it is we, if we need the money, we want this record to sound killer. Let's just do whatever we can do to get that money to do the album. And then from there, we'll go on tour like mad. We'll sell the album ourselves if we can, if we print it up. You know, the way the thing is there are these days with people downloading stuff on the internet and everything, I kind of feel playing live is where bands could make their money because then you could sell vinyls there, special seven inches, special yep. CDs. Yeah, all kind, all kind of merch. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, just specialty stuff that you can bring at the shows that you're not going to be able to buy on their website or you're not going to be able to download. Right, yeah. You're going to be able to buy stuff at the shows. And it's going to get those people and those kids to your shows. I agree. I mean, that's where it's at nowadays with everything with digital downloads and all that it's the live experience selling the stuff at the live shows that's where the money's yeah, that's yeah, where yeah, absolutely. Gonna you don't make money I'll be honest, off CDs. I just, I'll, I'll get an album like I just did it today I'll be honest I downloaded it online because there's a band I wanted to hear their albums downloaded two of their songs from their discography I thought it was killer went ahead on iTunes found those two albums that I downloaded bought them and now I just ordered them from this Hell's Headbangers um it's like a, it's like a album CD kind of website. We could buy LPs from bands, but like a lot of obscure stuff that uh -huh. you can't buy in typical stores, record stores, or whatever. It's not like an online place that I buy a lot of stuff. It's called hellsheadbangers.com. Definitely check it out because yeah. you can get cool. anything on this place. And I just ordered that those two albums that I just downloaded what two three days ago. Because now I want the content. I want the album. When I open it up, it's got this sick vinyl piece that's got a big upside down cross on it, all kinds of crazy. Yeah, you want the artwork, you want, you know. Nasty shit. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, so the, that's, that's where my excitement comes from. It's when I downloaded those albums and they sucked, pfft, yeah. I'm not going to buy the album. Exactly. I'm not going to buy oh, yeah. freaking vinyls for sure. And, well, I downloaded it. But it's like, that's yeah. What I'm, I'm saying to my bands, just put your record out for free. Let everybody download it for free. Because if it's great, everybody's going to buy it because they want to buy that piece to hold in their hands. And if they're too right. cheap right. not to buy it, then you know what? They're going to go to your shows. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody will eventually go to the shows and buy the merchandise, yeah. you know, the shirts and, and yeah. tickets and the whole whatever. line and everything. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's got a but, whole change of mindset, but I think yeah. it, overall down the road, it, it's going to be that way, maybe. Yeah, I'm talking with a lot of booking agents and, now that are booking tours based on selling digital sales through like their Facebook page right. and seeing what cities they're selling out of. And mm. 
or doing a show and selling tickets and seeing like, all right, this show is in London, but we had uh, like 30 tickets come from this city and 40 tickets come from that city. Yeah. Maybe we should do a show next time in those cities. Yeah. yeah. So yeah a lot that, of this technology is starting it. to get involved into the musical side of it to help musicians pinpoint their audience and, and make more money. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing because you can kind of do a tracker type thing. You could see, like you said, yeah. what cities they're selling in and then focus your yeah, def- attention there. Definitely maximize your your, yeah. Po- yeah, your, uh, your earning potential kind of, you know, in the, totally. going to those cities. Yeah, sure. And I'm big on, like, doing e-clubs and things like that, like the Kiss Army. I was in the Kiss Army when I was <laughs> old. Uh, nice. Were you in the Fiend Club Man. as well? <laughs> yeah, my yeah. aunt sent it in for me. I got the poster, the tats, the pin, all the shit. Man, it was the best thing ever. And when I look at today with the way things are downloading all that stuff, kids, if there was something I could join, if I could join, you know, the Gorgoroth zombie horde or whatever they would call it, you know, <laughs> that would be the sickest thing ever, you know, for me to join this club. Of, and I'd get email updates and I'd get things that other people really wouldn't get. Right. And, you know, some bands may not give a lot of that information out. I may not see Gorbrath getting it to that extent, but I'm sure they would do it to another extent where you can get an exclusive T-shirt Something, or hear yeah, exclusive yeah, music that that's they've right. done and they maybe post up on, on a, like a special site, like a SoundCloud that you can get through as a member of our, you know, e-club or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, then we yeah. pin the audience and then we just settle and, and constantly, you know, offer things to them that will, you know, basically enable us to pinpoint audience and, and sell you know that way oh absolutely and that's i mean i think it's just shifting in that direction anyway we're like yeah. obviously it's online it's digital and this and that so it's it's to the point now where you know bands have to kind of shift in that direction and focus their attention away maybe from the old classic uh cd releases only right. or you know or, mm-hmm. or, or you know dvds even dvds to a certain extent everything is online now so it's all digital Pretty much all yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. You're not getting anything yeah. with it, you know. It's like, okay, I'll get the music, I'll get the video, but you know, a lot of people with all the downloads and stuff like that, you're not getting the content, you're not getting right. you know, artwork and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you could download saying, the artwork on a JPEG, to, but you yeah, want something to hold in your hand, exactly, like, you know, something to yeah. put on a shelf or something, yeah, you know. Of course. And the vans too have to make the content worth it. Cause, you know, the mm-hmm. thing I hated back in the day is if I ever got an album and I open it up and there was nothing to look at, you know, it was like a piece of plastic covering the vinyl and. It was just the album cover, and with more content to have part of it. I bought records these days. I'm buying stuff, and they come with like little booklets in it, with all the lyrics and everything. And that, to me, that's where I feel bands should put that stuff out. Yeah, yeah I agree. So, well, I remember going into going into a record store, and I, and I bought Sadist Swallowed in Black just based upon the album cover. The the, the oh yeah, the <laughs> album artwork. You know, it's like I never heard Definitely. them before. I I saw that album cover. I was like, yo, that's fucking sick i have to buy the album and the album was great yeah yeah you swallowed Locally. and, swallowed and yeah, black was totally. awesome well i did i did the uh, same yeah. thing with uh slowly we rot yeah. and cause of death <laughs> I did the same fucking yeah. thing yeah. well i already heard Ca- i did the same thing with killers iron maiden yes oh yes the first time it was, iron maiden it was in the mall in the record store at the mall and it, was the, it came out and the, the journey album came out i think it was escape Escape 81. And I said to my mom, oh, I, want, yeah. I want to buy Escape. that album. So <laughs> I was the point I'd escape. And she heard the, the song, I think, on the, on the album record, on the radio. Oh, yeah, that's a good song. <laughs> <laughs> so I, got, I got the Iron Maiden album. <laughs> well, this is a good song, so too, Mom. I'm looking at it in the car. She's like, what did you get? What is that? And I go, that's the album I wanted. I told you I was going to get. <laughs> oh, no, I thought you were getting that other song. <laughs> no, no. And I'm like, no, worry about it. It's like a horror thing. You it's know? fine. Like, Don't worry. It's good. It's good. I did, uh, I did Don't worry. They're thing. English. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. I did that with yeah. the number of the beast because I'm, I'm 41 years old now, so I was a little behind. <laughs> I, yeah, I remember Killers was mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I bought The Number of the Beast, and I, I purely off the album cover. I was like, holy shit, this is scaring the shit out of me. I must buy this totally. one. <laughs> That's right. Oh. I must buy totally. this right now. That's the shit, man. That's the shit, definitely. I was the same way. This, if those album covers reach out to me. I don't think those ever one that she didn't like. My grandmother had a funny thing one time. She got me an ACDC record and said to me, are you sure you want to buy this record? <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? She goes, you know, because they call people ACDC back in my day. <laughs> what? Right. I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> I didn't understand it until I went home. My grandfather explained it to me. Yep. I was oh. Like, oh, God, no. I said, this is a sick band from, uh, from um, Scotland. I said, huh? <laughs> I did it with so many ACDC. bands. Like, it was, like, uh, Hello Waits I bought uh, uh, purely based off the album cover. I did that with... Uh, yeah. uh, so, yeah, this yeah, I definitely Hello Waits. I did it with uh, 
Iron Maiden. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, so many. I do a Blood Rust, Feast. Blood Rust, Feast. Possessed. Rust in Peace. Possessed was another yeah. band that I picked up. Seven Churches, Possessed, purely yeah. based off right. the album. Even Venom. Even Venom. And Venom, too. I did that with Venom. Oh, I, at War with totally. Satan. Yeah. I picked up At War yeah. with Satan just based upon the album cover. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, uh, you're also in, involved in uh, Project Rogue. Why don't you tell us a little yeah. bit about that? That seems like a very cool project. It's seems very cool it's I, i've known raymond we, well i think the first tour of fear factory actually ever did was obituary i think it was 1993 and it was a u.s tour i think it was our world demise tour i believe it was the tour we were on but it was a u.s tour and it was pretty big and i got to know those guys really well and uh i just I always kept in touch with raymond here and there and i think it just he knew he knows the kind of person that i am he likes the, the kind of music that i like i'm I like all kinds of stuff. I like punk rock. I like hardcore. I like death metal, black metal, I like everything, country. My, my tastes are different. My writing styles are different. Right. So everything I do is kind of like a little mysterious. And and I think he liked that about me. And he was just like, hey, I got this thing I'm doing. He got thought about you. I think I thought you'd be a perfect piece to do something on like, like this. And I like his concept of it because it is cool, you know, to get uh, – fans to actually be a part of it and to fund the money to put this album together whether or not i don't know how we're going to work it because we needed like i think he was looking at like 70 grand and I, I think we got like 10 grand or something but we'll put an album out what it's going to do for 10 grand i think it'll still be badass right oh i'm sure it's and, and be insane especially when we get us kind of all together because i've heard some of the things that are going through with them but yeah, i think when you add things that maybe mitch does and i do and, and rob does and a couple of the other band guys, it's Sean and and, uh, and Paul. Yeah, I think it's some really really cool stuff's going to come out of that. Yeah, I, mean, I you, couldn't say no. I couldn't say no for that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, it's an the, honor to be asked. The, there's guys in there from like all different styles. You got you know System of a Down, to, you know Cannibal yeah. Corpse, Lamb of God. Obviously, you know you on it. Death, Static yeah. X, Divine Damage Her- Plan, you know, it's, Heresy. Ton, tons of different it, it, just yeah, genres, different genres, and you know yep. different. I just different saw styles that too. That was Sean and Paul, did, and and Steve DiGiorgio, uh, and man, they were unbelievable. Yeah, fucking yeah. blew me away. Fucking really killer. Yeah, a lot of cool, cool, yeah, that's, a lot that's, of really cool names on there. Really. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah I think so it's I, gonna be killer. I think no matter no matter what you guys are able to put out with the money you raised, you know, it's it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you know, totally, with, totally. With, I think it'll be more cooler with a cheaper budget because this way it's gonna have to be raw. And it's a little bit raw, yeah. 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 It's, it's, but it's, then you could do another one. So yeah, well, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Just when, yeah, when you're done with this one, you do another one. Whatever how it's gonna work out, but I think the overall idea of it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I agree. Oh, it's and totally. Even if it wasn't funded or something, I, I was sitting under the impression that I, I was gonna fly out to a studio and hang. I got friends out there. I could do my thing out there and. It wouldn't be nothing to me because to me it'd be worth it to have it under my belt something like that you know of course absolutely okay. how could you how could it's you pass big, that up big yeah. resume builder yeah, exactly. jesus how could you exactly. possibly pass that up yeah that's great exactly yeah. exactly. exactly so uh and raymond is a fucking just one of the sickest drummers ever yeah. back in the day when we used to when we did this tour it was just obituary and fear factory and they were, they would start the show and they would blow doors every night. Kids would just go nuts over them. They were killer back in the day. But it was still, it was like they were the first band. So me and Raymond and um, Dino and Trevor decided to make a, an opening band. And we, and we had <laughs> Your own opening band? Night. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you call yourselves? Shit fucker some nights. We just said weird names. It's all these weird names. We just came up with a different name every fuckers. night. Or we had like uh, we'd wear like um, you know, ski masks and stuff, or we wore masks. We'd find costume masks in a local, you know, uh, pharmacist store, or whatever. We'd find some stupid stuff on Michael Jackson mask or whatever something. We'd all have a mask on, and we would just play obscure riffs and music and drumming and his. Sick- Blast stuff, and, and we'd always have a, a thing where it would start out blasting. We'd kind of stop. We'd go into like a bass breakdown. It would go into another blast that would go into a big breakdown. Nice. And we'd always have like these formulas. Oh, and so we, we did like nine or ten shows like that. That's, that's funny. awesome. That's sick. funny and as some hell. Some guys were like, what band is that? My God. You blew Shit fuckers. <laughs> Shit. What was that? <laughs> and then we're like, well, yeah, we, we don't even know. I don't even know what the fuck we're doing. <laughs> People, people run off. That's the kind of musicians that Raymond is. That's kind of the people that I like to 
to jam with because we could just get up there and right. do it. We had like some kind of a a formula going because we had to because when we did it, we stuck to that formula, it destroyed. Because every time you go, any time you could go from blast grind to just like a heavy breakdown, especially in those days, and then warm the kids up to hear Fear Factory and then Obituary, it was it was fucking amazing. But I've never seen it on tape. I've never seen anybody filmed it. Oh, that sucks! It's got this. Somebody has to have something out Somebody's there. Got it's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. Out Somebody's got to be like, "Do you have the new shit fucker?" <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I just got it. There is a band bootleg shit fuckers. Shit fucker, though, actually. Is there really? <laughs> is there really? Uh, yeah, yeah. You should. You should just call them up and say, "Hey, and look, and the out, we did this for you. Yeah, we were better." Rocks in hell. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys got any uh, any uh, any shows coming up? Anything you know in the future? Or anything? Any any. Gorgoroth, nothing as of now, no. We are uh, talking to a bunch of stuff. We have some South American stuff we're talking to, but my, our biggest thing now is getting this record done and released and out. And we've just I've just mastered it like two days ago. The mastering is done. Oh, good. So it's Uh-oh. signed, sealed, not signed, it's just sealed right now. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't figured out a label to actually go with yet. And uh-huh. Something that Roger and Furnace is putting together He's got his reasons and his ideas. It's it's going to come together. So, uh, so you're have... fucking badass. I mean, I can't wait for it to come out because it's heavy as he- it's. When I listen to it, I don't even really think it's Gorgoroth. So it's Gorgoroth, but it's like the rebirth of Gorgoroth, like kind of like we said on the last record. But this is kind of like what it, the rebirth is because it just got so much heavier and so much more better now. It's it, it's. Blows me away when I hear it. It's so killer. Well, we'd nice. love to play it on the show when, yeah. uh, when it comes out, man. That'd oh, be fantastic. Oh, man, yeah. yeah. When, once I get some stuff going, I'm def- I'll definitely love to come back and play the album, the whole thing, shit. Oh, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. When it comes out, you know, I'll, I'll keep in touch with yeah. you, you know, we'll when you it comes on. out, you know. You know, yeah. we'll definitely have you back on. We could play the whole album. I don't care. Absolutely. Just have one show dedicated to Gorgoroth. Yeah, I don't care. That's fine great. by me. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be, fantastic. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And but, everybody's gonna love it it's gonna be insane yeah that's great um where can uh, any information about upcoming projects where's the best place to find out about what's going on with gorgoroth and you personally you know probably the facebook pages for now I and mean, yeah. if i did anything really crazy that's where most of my information would come from but I, what i'm what i'm kind of concentrating now is getting this gorgoroth album finished and I'm, I also started managing Malevolent Creation. Oh, wow. And I just got them hooked up with a pretty big record deal. So a lot of big news is going to be coming up with them. Nice. And they Very just, cool. Uh, put together, they got about, we, the, uh, the album we were demoing to labels was about a five song demo. I think some of the songs they put out a lot, I mean, they recently put out on the internet. But some of the songs they got are the best. The love one I've, I've ever heard. I, I saw those I'm guys just last year. Floored they were, with some of the stuff they're doing. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah, them last crazy. year. I actually yeah. filmed those guys last year uh, in in Brooklyn, and they were yeah. fucking intense. Yeah. I mean, that was yeah. great, great the, show. The tight is the tight is anything. It's yeah. amazing to see these guys on stage. Killer band. They're such diehard metalheads. You know, it's just, and I see them. They're still all of them broke. They live in Die Hard. They, they're doing a tour right now in Europe, and it's like all these festivals and some kind of like one off shows here and there. They're like playing for barely for no money. They're going over yeah. there pretty much for shit out of their pocket, but they just are diehards. Right, yeah. And I see what they're doing and the mistakes that they're making, and I have the time to help them. So that's some of the one of the things I just started doing is helping them, and I got them kind of tweak this tour a little bit more so it's going to be in more of their favor. Good. I'm going to hook them up with a better record deal. I got oh, a better great. booking agent for them to work with. So that's a big thing for me too that's going to be coming up is, is that that album's going to be crushing. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's great. great that you're working on both sides of the fence really and that's just awesome that you're, all, yeah. you're helping your friends and yeah, that's just great, man. Yeah, I, I, might, I might have to give you a call soon too. You know? I, feel. <laughs> yeah, my, my, I have the best perspective because I've been through all the bullshit. I've seen all the all the mistakes that we made and all the crap that we went through and what I shouldn't do, what you should not think about and move on from it. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, but, we really appreciate you coming on tonight, Frank. Yeah, it, yeah man. Really. Thanks for having me, guys. For and, sure. and we'd love to have you back on again. Absolutely. When the new stuff comes out, please keep us posted. You can keep in touch with Brian and uh, yeah. and all of us, and then we'll have you back on talking more about all the stuff when it's uh, out and ready to go. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah guys. Definitely. And and, and again, I got my my new band coming up, so I might have to uh, I might have to 
you know, pick your brain a couple times, you know, <laughs> about stuff like that. Yeah. You know? So anytime, man. Oh, anytime. that's awesome. I'm always up to answer questions. You got my email address. Just yes. Shoot me an email for sure, man. Thanks. Thanks, thank thanks so much, so man. Thank this you was very such much. a great thank interview. Thank you so much. Oh, right on, man. Right on. Hell yeah. You want me to do like a station ID or something? That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, Please. You can, you can yes. do it right now. All right, everybody, yeah, incredible. Yeah. I, I always, I always know that sometimes. When I well do something, like, oh shit, we forgot to do the station ID. But That's shit. right. <laughs> but do you want me to do anything special? Just Metal Thunder Radio, blah hey, blah. Yeah, you know, just say hey, uh, this is Frank from you know Gorgoroth, and you're listening to Metal Thunder Radio. Yeah, you know, and add in whatever you want. All right. Ready, set. This is Frank Watkins from Gorgoroth. You're listening to Metal Thunder Radio. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect. Good one. Thank you, that sir. Great. Thanks so much. Thank All you right, so man. much. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you guys soon, man. All right, you cool. Yeah. Have a good night. Have right. a great night, bro. You too, man. Thanks. Later. Later.